Hey guys, and welcome back to the show, New Earth Alchemy, how to heal, how to manifest, how to make the world a better place, okay? We're trying to be your leading source for all New Earth creation, because we don't like how people did it in the beginning. We don't like how the people before us built this world. So how do we make the world better? Well, the same way we made it bad, we because hurt people hurt people, right? Healed, non-healed individuals interacting with each other creates ripples of pain, suffering, and well, we heal it the opposite direction by healed individuals going forth and interacting with others and creating love, compassion, acceptance. But we can't be that for people until we are that within ourselves, right? So no matter what it is you specifically are trying to heal from or accomplish, because you also can't achieve your goals and manifest what you want from an unhealed state, we're your, we're your people. We're your, um, I'm your, I'm your chick. I'm your girl. Although I do refer to myself as a we a lot of the time because, you know, we're gods. We, you know, you got those spirit gods behind you and the ancient stuff and yah, yah, woo, woo. That's your vibe. You're in the right place. Anyway, today's episode specifically, though, is about gut health and how our emotional state has an effect on all of that. Our digestive system digests not only our food, but across the board, that which we consume. And what we consume goes a lot deeper than our food. It's also what we watch on TV and the relationships that we have and the interactions that we have and the pastimes we partake in. Every single thing that we are consuming in any way can be processed, is processed by the gut. This is a new concept, okay? It's not. It's actually not a new concept. Hippocrates himself was, you know, and he was probably talking about the father of medicine, if you're not familiar with who Hippocrates is, if I could speak. He was the father, the founding father of modern medicine. He said that everything starts in the gut, health starts in the gut, and this is true, but on so much a larger scale than we ever imagined. Turns out you have neurons in your digestive tract, just like you have neurons in your head, and it's communicating with the rest of your body and affects how well your body regenerates itself, how well it repairs that which needs repairing, it, how well you heal. In this episode, we're talking about that, we're discussing that, and detoxing, and all the things that you can do to digest and process that which you need to digest and process like emotions you know from our past traumas and whatnot so that you can get those to process out of the body detox out of the body and stop causing issues remember everything's connected and everything's related so if all this sounds like you're in the right place i hope you enjoy this very enthusiastic episode with our expert kareem namani <laughs> Oh, so I forgot to ask you to pronounce your name for me. It's Kareen. Okay, I had thought so, but I wanted to make sure because I, it, where I'm from, we would pronounce it Karen, which I'm sure that you hear a lot. Which I'm sure 90% of my clients call me Karen, Karen, Kareen. All good. Everything works. <laughs> awesome. So Kareen Namani, yes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Please, thank you so much for being here with us, for one, and talking with us today. I'm really excited about our topic. Uh, but go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience and tell them what you're all about. Sure. First of all, thank you so much for having me, Savannah. It's my own, it's my pleasure and my honor to be here to, again, talk about the most important subject in the world and that uh, I'm so connected and love is gut gut issues, gut health, the importance of the gut, or as I like to call it, shit in a a very different (laughs) perspective. So I'm Karin Lachmani. I'm a mother of four amazing kids, married. Uh, I'm in the health business for 24 years. I own Pure Center, which is a clinic for colonics. That's my major... um, job is to clean people, cleaning shit of people, cleaning waste, cleaning people and uh, putting them on the fast track to better life. 
or changing their life to the best, rethinking and evaluate what's important. And uh, like I mentioned, I have Pure Center as a clinic. I own also a vitamin company. It's called NOAA Vitamins. And again, it's all connected to the health, gut issues, gut health, which is probiotics, digestive enzymes, all the good stuff. And I wrote a book. It's called Shit Isn't a Dirty Word. So I'm holding under my like big hat author as well. Um, over the years, people just ask me why there is no information about what I do. So I put it in writing as funny as it gets. Simple for the average person to understand what is it all about. So yeah, colonics is a big name for what I do. But in the past 24 years, that's what I do. I preach, I talk in every stage that they give me to, to bring that subject to the mainstream. I want people to talk shit. I know. <laughs> Sounds funny, but that's my dream is that people are not going to be embarrassed by having constipation or diarrhea or gas, bloating, headaches, you know, the regular average things that I think 90% of the population suffer from, but no one really think about the connection. Now, this is just one aspect is the physical aspect. The other aspect is the emotional and the spiritual that goes along with it. Uh, this is what I'm all about. This is what I want people to understand. You can see in my smile that um, I talk the walk. I walk the talk. That's what I do in my life. That's what I do to myself. I clean myself. I teach others how to change something small in their diet or life and to have a better experience. And this is the light things. The heavier is the disease we surround, like cancer, like uh, Crohn, like other fatigues, migraines, fertility, you know, all those big names. And they're all connected to the gut. Mm -hmm. So um, what you're going to call me the queen of shit, the queen of gut, the, the, this is names I heard over and over again. Shit whisper, you name it. Everything start and end in the gut. Today more than ever, and this is some I'm so excited because today more than ever, when you go to any doctor, regular doctor, the first question they will ask or they should ask is how many times did you poop today or in the past week? It's a question they didn't ask before, and I'm so happy they start to because that's the first indication of what you have in general, of how your health and everyday life is about. So, yeah, that's like in general what I do. Awesome. And I love it. it very effective marketing, for sure. It gets attention. I know, I know. I'm getting it a lot. It's like a, it's a, it's a gold egg. But, you know, not everybody wants to talk about, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for the subject that no one's want to say a word about. And it's so important. I have to say, Savannah, it's so important. And if that was disease of maybe old people or, you know, only if you eat shit, you suffer. No, it's, it's so not. It's, it, it, it actually... I want to say, I'm not that great in math, but I want to say that 95% of the population will have at least one out of those three is bloating, fatigue, constipation, and I'm going to add one more thing, headache okay. and, and back pain. It's a very common problem that I think everyone has, but no one makes a big deal out of it till it's a problem. Yes. So as long as it's not a problem, you live with it. And you can live without doing colonics. I'm not saying that that's going to be what's going to save, you know, your life. It's got just going to improve your life a lot. But sometimes that small problem like back pain can be reflected on so much shit that is staying in your colon and it's pressing on your back. That's why there is back pain. 
And same goes for constipation, same goes for migraines. When there is so much toxins in the body, it will come as a headache. And that's just one thing. And if we're taking it to the spiritual thing of it, we're holding from our past. We're holding emotions. We're holding traumas. We're holding happiness, sadness, things that happen to us. And that can cause a physical problem. So, yeah, if we talk about it, everything starts in our gut. <laughs> yeah, that's what Hippocrates said, the father of medicine. And back True. in ancient Rome or Greek, somewhere around in there. So the yeah. health begins in the gut. It's all about our gut microbiome. We have uh, neurons in our digestive system, just like we have neurons in our brain also in our heart, but we're not talking about that system today. And that, that system, by the way, is connected to your gut. Oh, sure. They imagine, are. Yeah. Imagine if someone get a heart attack. Well, the heart is the problem, right? If someone have problem in the colon, it will affect the heart, not the opposite. So that's why it's so important. It's like, think about it like the major engine of the car. If that engine doesn't work properly, this car is not going to get far. <laughs> yeah, our digestive tract helps us not only to digest our food, but also our emotions too. Our mm -hmm. thoughts, our feelings, yeah. like you said earlier, the traumas. We don't realize uh, there's so much to unpack from what just you've said already. <laughs> I know. That's why it's that, that's why it's so important to talk about it. And every time we do talk about it, people are like covering like, no, I poop a hundred times a day. No, I don't have a problem. And I'm saying, you know, Houston, it's okay. You don't have a problem. It's amazing. Keep pooping 20 times a day. Just release toxins out of the system. You know, and I talked about cars before. We live in America, and I think every American that owns a car take the car every three months for tune-up, right? They should. Should. You don't have to do that. I mean, if we think about it, this car will drive, right? For now. Unless you live in California and, you know, the distance or long. But it, that car should run even if that uh, oil is very dirty and it should. I mean, you don't have to, to tune it up. But what's going to happen a few years after? When problems start, when that pipe will be stuck with some dirty oil or, I don't know, whatever there is inside that oil, it's going to block something. And then you're going to see the car doesn't move. And then you have a problem. Think about it as our body. We can live with constipation for years to come and take laxatives as many as we want. In some point, those laxatives are not going to work. And then we need something extra. And after a while, living with constipation and fatigue and cramps and stomachache, it's going to take the toll. Till one day, bless you, see, everything I say is true. Till one day, your body will stop. Mm -hmm. This major cleansing organ will stop function. And then we start to see disease come because they never come in once. Constipation will lead to headache, will lead to sometimes cancer, sometimes other ugly things, and that will affect. And then the person will remember, oh, I need to do something about it because nothing moves right now. So my suggestion to everybody, don't wait till something happens, you know, prevent, start to clean your body. Worse come to worse, you're just going to feel better. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the worst that can happen. And you're going to feel cleaner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easier to fix a problem before it becomes a problem, for sure, rather than mm -hmm. that's exactly what most of us do is we wait until the problem occurs because we don't want to address it, because we don't want to think about it, we don't want to look at it, especially on this topic right here. As you said, nobody wants to talk about this one specifically. It goes across the board. Nobody wants to look at anything healthy-wise until they have to. Well, sure. 
I say no one. I say probably the most. The percentage are low. The, the 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 majority. You're absolutely right. I wish it was the opposite, but like everything in life, and I'm gonna take it spiritual way. You're not gonna get close to God unless something really terrible happened to you, and you you try to find Him, right? And I'm saying, trust God every day. Don't wait for something horrible to happen to you to feel close. You know, it, it's it can be on everything in life. That's why I'm saying colonics or cleansing or talking about shit or cleaning or keep it clean and keep it healthy. It's not just mantra. It's not just, oh, let's do that because it's in the mainstream right now. It's something that is so important so we can actually live on this planet, so we can love ourselves. Because, I mean, you're a woman and I'm a woman, and, and you know as much as I do that deep inside we care about the outside. I mean, not me and you maybe, but the majority cares about the outside, how it's look like. No one asks questions, by the way, when someone goes to do Botox or whatever it is, no one asks what's the worst that can happen to me or what is this poison you put inside? Obviously, no one asks. They do. Yeah. When it comes to colonic cleansing, there is so many questions that I'm always happy to answer. But we care about the outside. But you know what? If the the inside is not well, it's going to show off outside at the end of the day. So my slogan of the business is beauty comes from inside out. It's not the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to clean and then give that amazing treatment, whatever you do to the skin or colonics, by the way, clean toxins and toxins clearing from the skin, which is the biggest system of all. And that's why you can see my skin. It's no makeup, no nothing. I mean, I'm 48. I forgot to mention it. Never had Botox in my life. Now that I'm against, it's amazing for whoever wants to. The major thing is when you clean, you see it. It's radiate out of you. You are like fresh, clean, happy. And it's reflect on your soul, on happiness, really happiness from inside. And, and you don't need to do a lot for that. that. That's the major thing. Yeah, it's energy. And you can see that energy and you can feel that energy. You could look at anybody and see exactly how healthy or unhealthy they are on the insides based on their face. Their body, oh, yeah. Their posture. Trust me, I do that every day. <laughs> yeah, and that's why... And it's a, you're right. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life. It's not just a wait until something bad happens or like, like diets, for example, I don't agree with diet culture because everybody treats it as a temporary thing. You overhaul your whole diet for a set amount of time until you get the results you want or whatever, whatever. And then everybody falls off and they wonder why they can't keep up with it. And it's like, well, because you're trying to do too much. You're not looking at it from a sustainable direction. You're looking at it from like a quick fix. But we have to be working towards who we want to be 30 years from now consistently, not just within the next year, not, not just for our summer bod. You, you actually said the magic word, quick fix. Mm -hmm. Because we're living in i mean it's not our fault obviously but it is and it's not but we live in this society and world that everything as we speak everything is right now i mean if before you needed to write a letter that's gonna be mailed and then you're gonna read and enjoy and smile today it's a click away a text message mean nothing. You don't even read the whole thing. You read probably like the first brief, in, out, done deal. Same as digestion. People don't digest. You don't really, like, you don't really, you know, digest your food. You swallow it. Same as diet. Now, about diet, I have a lot to say. A good diet, diet is what we eat. That, that, that's the definition of diet. But people think diet is weight loss. Mm -hmm. yes. Because that's how they represent it. Mm -hmm. But diet in general is what we eat is exactly the menu that we should eat a day 
the amount of calories or whatever. Every fast thing will come back fast. So we're wasting half of our life to lose weight, to pay this magic pill and the other magic food and eating cartons and papers and say, oh, it's yummy because I lost weight. When in reality, we spend the other half on amazing restaurants. If you think about it, how screwed we are. <laughs> We wasting money to, to eat well, and then we wasting the money to lose it. it. It's crazy, but it's true. Now, for everybody out there, I'm saying there is no quick fix and there is no one diet for all. The same way there is no one cleanse for all. There is nothing that fits everybody. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're different people. Mm -hmm. We have different baggage. We have different emotions. We're coming from different backgrounds, different food, different everything. So it's impossible to give you one diet that's going to fit 20 other. In reality, it might. But when you really see it, if you and your boyfriend or your husband will do the same thing, he probably is more going to lose less. Probably. That's going to happen. Or with another friend. It, it, it can happen for all. And if you want, want to stick to a good diet, have a diet that your weight loss is for long term and you can live with it. You can't live on juices. You can't live on fast. You can, I mean, this is all amazing brand thing. And, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I call it like commercial. Yes. It's all brand name for everything, you know. The fact you're buying in whole food doesn't mean you're healthy. That's, that's my slogan to it. Like the, the fact you bought three juices a day doesn't mean you're like a healthy, holistic person. It just means that you just join the rest of the crowd that does the same. Same goes for cleansing. The same cleanse is not good for all, but it's a good start for everybody. And everybody have their own phase of cleaning. And each stage of cleaning as a therapist, I see what comes out of you so I can actually give you, only you, what to expect next. And even you, when you come to my sessions, one session is not going to look like the second session. It's not going to look like the third. Why? Because you had different day, different emotion. You ate different thing. You know, so it's all about us, individual and the moment we're going to start to look at ourselves individual and actually go to the core of it, love ourselves, mm -hmm. love every bit, but really love, not, not saying, oh, I love myself because I went to this class or no, love the good and the bad because you can always improve. You cannot go backwards and beating yourself for, for something you've done, definitely not going to help. And actually it causes more stress, more disease. So my suggestion to a lot of people is start to live happy. Happy doesn't mean go with a smile. Happy means happy with choices you make. Every good choice you make or even bad choice you make, just deal with it, move on. If you're taking that baggage claim to the next level, that's a disease. That means you didn't really, in reality, you didn't get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And that you see a lot when I do colonics. Colonics, by the way, for the audience, is a treatment to clean the colon. The colon is 5.7 feet long, and it can contain up to 15 pounds of shit. Yes, 15, one, five pounds of waste, shit, poop, whatever you want to call it. So it's not fat. And imagine we carry that everywhere we go, how dirty we are. And when you see those things coming out, you're amazed. Like, I mean, seeing it, it's, it's blow-minded because it's really hard to admit that I'm full of shit. I, well, I will admit I'm full of shit, literally. But the average person, you know, he's not going to admit he's dirty, obviously. But we spend so much time telling ourselves, no, we're good, we're this, we're dealing, we're releasing but in reality, we don't really re release because as long as we hold it, it's still there, mm -hmm. you know? 
So, so a lot of the time, and I'm sure you, you, you can remember some good time in your life, maybe even three months ago, for my, that you went through a phase of changing, because there is always change. Changing maybe work, changing life, changing houses, changing career, but the change was good and you did great job on yourself and you attend classes and you attend like body work and amazing thing. But the last really thing that you need to, to lose or to get ready is what you hold. And this is the one part physically that no one give attention to and we're still holding. So there is no full releasing of anything. And when you come to colonics, and it's amazing because people are coming right at the right time, I guess, in their life. And when you see everything comes out of you and you get that <gasps> release mode, that's when you give that ending story to all your release changes in, in, in right on the spot. That's why I'm in love with this treatment because what you see is what you get. I mean, I, I'm not hiding anything. So about the treatment is 45 minutes procedure. It sounds worse than it actually is because I don't have any other way to describe it, but it's a great feeling during it afterwards and the releasing part it's like wow it's like taking stone out of you know your body and it's great i highly recommend it to everybody to at least do once in their life now if you can't do colonics there is other ways you can use it's enema and it's not a colonics but it's a great base to to start something and then change your diet to, to fit good diet to your needs mm -hmm. and then add some um, some good nutrients, good vitamins. Now, we live in society that we buy everything they sell us without knowing that all those vitamins, if your gut is dirty and stuck, they're not going to go anywhere and you're going to poop half of it out and piss some of it. So uh, you're going to get the minimum. But if you want to get the maximum potency of every nutrient or food or juice, you better clean yourself first. Like that's in general. And it's amazing treatment. Like I said, it sounds worse, but uh, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than it sounds. And doesn't hurt. It just sounds terrifying and uncomfortable. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> let me tell you one thing about uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to be sick. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I rather 45 minutes of discomfort and amazing life. But, you know. Yeah, uh, we're still, we're just now getting to that whole mind-body connection understanding. Beforehand, like, I'm sure 20 years ago when you got started, did you already know about the connection of emotions and bodily functions? Or was that something that you learned later on with the practice? That's amazing question. Um, it's I, I can answer in two parts. One part is I was born with a gift, uh, the gift of touching people, touching in their soul, in their body, touching. I think I always had that healing touch. And when I went to school, I started as a massage therapist and then uh Right away, I signed for a naturopathic doctor. That, that was my route. Um, nutrition was always something that drove me, but hands-on was the one thing I clicked really well. It was like dancing. like it, it was very natural to me. So when I used to massage, right then, it was the connection of body-mind-soul because... It's, it's amazing how sometimes you touch, you have the Reiki and you have the release of those crystals and you come for back pain and you, you get with emotional, you know, it's like you can cry, laugh, there is a lot of reaction. Mm -hmm. During my, um, my school years, I learned more detox because... I, I don't even know how to explain it. something like calling. I, it was just meant to be. On my days learning um, detox, that's when 
they introduced colonics to me. And on, with that being said, colonics back then was like, uh uh. Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't dream of cleaning people. My, I mean, that wasn't my dream. Let's put it that way. But as doing my internship, I worked with cancer patient. Well, that moment, I think everything fell into place. That moment, it was an opening eyes, you can call it. Uh, my my um, soul path, everything aligned to what I need to do. I, I, I don't even have words to describe it. It was just that. Fell in love. I, I knew this is my... my this is my destiny. That that is what I want to do. And in purpose, I'm saying cancer because cancer is one thing I'm very related to um, in so many ways. And my dream is to work with a lot of cancer patients, which I do, to see the smile on their face after a cleanse was the world to me. Till today. I mean, this is my biggest part because it's not about fixing anybody or making them, you know, healthier. It's about giving them that moment of relief to feel human. And this is something you that it, it's hard to even describe because it's that smile when you see that mm, I can, I mean, I have a good day. Those people don't go to the restroom while they, a, a lot of them suffer from a lot of constipation uh, when they do chemo. That's one of the side effects, unfortunately. And people go for 10 days, 20 days, not using restroom, only on laxatives. Mm -hmm. So imagine that someone like me or any other therapist that come and give them that release. It's not just physical, it's emotional, it's spiritual, it's, Feeling human for that moment, not even that day, but that moment. And, you know, that, that, that said it all. That, that was my purpose in life. This is my soul. Uh, I want to say that, that that's pretty much what brought me from the back door to colonics. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I chose to do what I do. And yes, it was hard. 30 years ago, no one talks about colonics. 24 years ago, when I started my practice here in LA, people looked at me like crazy, include my husband, mm -hmm. include all my the, my closest friends, family that told me, are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm. Just keep teaching massage. Do ma Who's going to come for you? Who? And I said back then, it feels vivid like I said today. I want to be from the first seeds. I, I want to be the leader in that field to, to, to make that movement. I, I want to take that movement up because it, it, this is the most important. And, you know, if it was easier, probably I wouldn't do. I like challenges. <laughs> it wasn't easy. It's still not easy. Again, I'm talking about it everywhere possible on every stage. I have my own podcast. It's called Shit is in a Dirty Word. I wrote two books. Now it's translated to Hebrew. Everywhere I go, I, I, I bring the awareness because I this is my destiny. This is my purpose in life is to, to make a change. And if you look at all the crazy people that make change in our life, they look at them as crazy. So it's okay. It's just a good thing. It's a compliment to call me crazy. But if I can help one person, I help the world. That makes it to me. When I wake up in the morning, that's my purpose. Yeah. Uh, it's the gut health, I don't know, evolution, revolution. It's really... Yeah, yeah. Gaining. It's going well. It's amazing. You, you, I mean, I must say that in the past seven years, People talk about it, but they talk about it because they heard about colon cancer. Because let me tell you, Savannah, colon cancer and col cancer in general is rising. The numbers are rising up like crazy. 
if before we thought cold cancer is for some old person, no, it's not. Young people have colon cancer and a lot of young men have colon cancer. So it, it's a disease that, have, that, that a lot of people have. If it was third on place today, I think it's number two. It's rising. Yeah. A and it's important. And, and it's not just our diet. Again, it's our emotions, it's our thoughts, everything. toxins, the things that we interact with, the emotions we take on from there. Uh, yoga also releases trapped emotions the same way it's in like the massage does as well anything it gets um because we are what we consume not only through food but through what we watch on tv what we listen to the books the movies the podcasts the interactions we have with other people really the interactions we have with other people there is nothing more uh, impactful in our life for our health, happiness, fulfillment, well-being, and our trauma, despair, loneliness, like the the biggest ends of the spectrum are our relationships. And <clears throat> we hold on to that in every part of our body. So and it can make us sick. Yeah, you touch a you touched a very important subject because I mean, I'm talking about gut health and that everything starts there. But as we talked before, it's one big triangle. It's emotional, physical, and spiritual. It's all three cannot exist one without the other. And one will affect, it's like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we live also in a world that uh, there is a lot of commercials, a lot of uh, selling. They sell you health through uh, whole food, organic, be vegan. Be, I mean, in our head, vegan equal uh, skinny and healthy, which in reality, vegan can be equal big, unhealthy, and a lot of disease. Mm -hmm. You know, so... It's it's not necessarily true, and the fact we're buying in uh, Whole Food or any other uh, healthy store, it doesn't mean it ha doesn't have sugar or fat or carbs or it's so healthy. Also, healthy food sometimes is not good for us. And I'm gonna break some myths about kale. Kale is disaster to our body, you know, and. It was the year of kale. Everything was with kale, you know, and our body cannot digest that shit. And I keep telling people, just take it, remove it out of your diet. Just take something else like spinach, like aspirin. It, there is other things that's 10,000 times much healthier than kale. But because it was like a brand already, people are just leaning on kale, on this, on, you know, on, you know what I mean about selling. But they don't want us to be really healthy because if they wanted to be healthy, they wouldn't, you know, sell you drugs that you should be addicted to and laxatives that will kill your gut and punch holes in your gut and makes uh, your cone lazy and that will cause other, you know, uh, different disease but no one talks about that why because some doctor prescribe you this and that and that and i'm not saying not all the doctors are the same and there is amazing doctors in the field but you did touch a, a really good point is our emotions our feeling our thoughts our well-being and that's why i talked about be happy happiness he happiness equal health Mm -hmm. More than the food you're intaking, because you can be on strict diet and eat healthy as hell and exercise. But when you don't like yourself and you're angry and you're holding on, you can create disease more than any other person that's going to eat McDonald's every day. I'm not saying it's a good thing to eat McDonald's, but like for, for that, <laughs> with that being say. There is connection and there is no connection. So when people come to me, I know I'm odd in this all health field. People do look at me like the odd 
unicorn because I teach people first be healthy. I mean, be happy. If you can hold happiness to 80% of your life, happy also with bad choices. Mm -hmm. Let's say you wanted to drink today wine. Drink it. You already did. Why beat yourself for it? Mm -hmm. Why telling yourself, my God, I will, I, uh, I will gain that one pound. It's not good. Just tell yourself the opposite. Did you enjoy the wine? Amazing. Tomorrow, don't drink it. It's a, a very simple thing. Very simple. Even if you had a bad day today, always look up for the next day. Because you know what? When tomorrow comes, you can't change yesterday. Yesterday will pass. It's never coming back to you. So it's all a matter of how to take things and look at things uh, in life that can make your life a little bit, be a little bit better than they started. And knowing there is a light in, at the end of the tunnel, that's for me happy. Happy with myself, even if I'm five pounds more. Okay. Do I, and ask yourself, do I do anything for those five pounds? Or I just complain I gain five pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, if it bothers you that much, do something about it. If not, if you don't do anything about it, don't bother to complain. That complaint is not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll make and, it worse. Yeah. It's only make it worse. And that's why everything starts with 80% happiness. Because I know a lot of people personally that have clean diet, but from the other hand, take anti-anxiety pills, antidepressant pills. So you're killing it. So so what you done with it? So I'd rather that you get eat shit and take that shit out of your life. That is made me more happy. But this is something I, I have to say like, because it's like take it off my chest for people, audience that listen to us. Everything that happened to us, to you, to us, it's not just happened for a reason. It does. But more to it, everything we feel, it's normal. Mm -hmm. Normal. That's what makes us human. God's sake. That's what I call be human when something hurt me it's okay it's supposed to hurt because that's what humanity is that's what the human body works that cell hurt that means it's alive obviously if it wasn't alive it wouldn't hurt mm -hmm. and as i like to i always like to describe things as like when the AKG goes up and down, that means we're alive. When it's perfect, you have one straight line, we're dead. You know, it's very important. There is no such a thing perfect. That's why I aim to 80%. 80% of good health, 80% of good nutrition, 80 and 80% 80 of happiness will lead you to good, stable healthy lifestyle with good choices and that is all about that that is what we're all working towards because i i'm sure you know and i'm sure you attend so many classes about how to love yourself how to clean yourself how is a god all those right but in reality if we're not practice what we're learn doesn't mean shit to me doesn't mean anything it's like really it's like it's another thing that in our background. Yeah, you have to look at those motivations behind why <laughs> you're cleaning up your diet. And if it's because of self-loathing, then you're activating your, you know, we have the sympathetic ner nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And uh, the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response, which more or less shuts down our ability to digest. And so sure. if we're hating on ourselves and we're, worried about things and we're angry about things and we're complaining about things then that is our fight or flight nervous system shutting everything down to address the immediate concern and we need to flip ourselves into the rest and digest rest digest and heal which is the counterpart of that so if you're focusing on the emotion side which is more <laughs> yeah, than the actual diet side then you're able to digest not only your food, but your emotions and 
you know, all of that digestion turns into your body because you are what you consume. You are what you eat. And if you yes. it's all clogged up, you can't digest anything. And then you're barely getting you're so right. Yeah. You're so right. And that's what I'm saying. Like love. Where is love? Love between friends, love between like compassion, love, talking, expressing. That's part of who we are. And unfortunately, we're going into a world that shut those things up. And that's why you have more people that shattered, lonely, isolated, no reflection. That's why when you see Botox, like... Uh, living in LA, you just see it a lot. It's like the same reflection on every face. It's like no reflection. It's like who we are, how vulnerable. It's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to let go, to to deal, let go, process. Like it, it's it's amazing. It's it's powerful because when you when you do all those things, the power is in your hand. Mm -hmm. But when we let, when we give that power away to pills, doctors, medications, we're not in. We think we're in control, but as a matter of fact, we're not. Yeah, um, I had something <laughs> to go from there, but I was just letting you talk and forgot it all. No, it's like it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a subject that we need like. 20,000 podcasts just to talk about one subject, but That's it's true. really hard to like to put everything and, and as people that knows me know that I like to give as much as possible. That's me giving, giving, giving. But the most important that I want your audience to understand about what I do and why it's so important to talk about it. It's because I want to save them save the time save like the the obstacle that will meet them in some point and i want them to live after that podcast with something in their head that will think about their gut health and with that being said you know colonics is important gut health is important the poop is important you know shape colors, smells, and this is the most important part of everything. So if anyone in the audience will go home next time he poop, he's going to look at what comes out and say, oh, that bitch, say something about it. Let's see. And because there is like... <laughs> There is meaning to the colors, the shapes, and the smell that are so important to identify disease or problems. So, yeah, very important. People, look at what comes out of you. It's not just poop. It's the very important information. And listen to your body. Listen to signs. The body gives signs all the time. We don't want to listen to it. Because maybe tomorrow I'm not going to feel that way, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So listen, if you have constipation more than four or five days, something is wrong. The fact you're going to go one time, good time, doesn't mean anything. And the fact people do go to the restroom two times a day doesn't mean they don't need colonics. They still need because there is no elimination of 100%. Yeah. So yeah, there is little tips like those that are very important that I, I want to share with your audience is listen, be aware, be in tuned with your body and, and, and know how to say, oh, that's not right. If the smell is too strong, that means like in, like in life, if the smell is strong, that means something is rotten there. Something is old. That means that, okay, maybe I'm not eliminating like I should. It's a surrender in all the ways. <laughs> Yeah, holding on to your so it's energy, full yeah. coming full circle. And uh, the more you understand the energy aspect and how you can apply it to uh, actual bodily lifestyle functions and everything that every one of us has to uh, navigate, the more these things begin to be more intuitive. 
Because you're right. Your body is always talking to you. It just doesn't use words. And we think that because it doesn't use words, it's not actually saying anything. It's not trying to communicate. It's just a feeling that we had. But your feelings are pointing you towards things. And you can tune into your intuition and decide what that means for you. And then you can try a road that feels right for you. And if that one works, then great. And if it doesn't, then maybe it needs tweaking a little bit, but keep tweaking what you decide to do about it until you figure out what works for you. Yeah. And I'm going to give the last tip is when something is already happened, for example, when cancer happened, that I'm, I'm taking the worst of all, that means that you had so many signs, so many we didn't listen. And when the, when it's already happened, that means that it's already been there for more than a year. You know, more than a year that we didn't make the connection. So that's why it's so important to listen, to see, to, to make sure that there is no repeat things more than a week. Something is wrong. Check it out. I rather disease. Because by the time the body is shut down, that means that it's, signs are not going to help you right now. You know? So, yeah, it's to, to listen, to see, to, to investigate. I'm not saying go to the doctor for every small thing. But if something is happened really often, you know, check it out. Better be safe than sorry. Colonoscopy is one of the best, you know, best treatment. I mean, lab work that, that you can do to identify cancer before it even happened. Or if it happened, it's just early stage. So, yeah, a lot of people are afraid to do it because it's uncomfortable. Well, uncomfortable for one day, but safe life, you know. It's comfortable for a lot of days. So it's a matter of choice, your choice. Well, I definitely know a couple of people, or I don't personally know. My parents know a couple of people who have actually died during colon colonoscopies. Because it was too late. Mm, that's fair. That's fair. We put things off until it's too late for all the time. Very simple. Very simple. Colonoscopy is something anyone from age, I want to say 45, 50, start to, to check up. It's one exam every five years. If there is something, you better know about it. And if there isn't, you, you know about it. So it's same as, you know, breast cancer, same as every exam, pap smear. Or that. It's uncomfortable, but you know what? Life is uncomfortable. What can we do? <laughs> There is. Now, I'm definitely uh, one of those people who are just going to randomly drop dead one day. We have no idea why. Because <laughs> look, and that's why I do all of this is because I, I saw my parent, my grandparents and other family members just when I was a kid, they were so sick and they were just taking pill after pill after pill and having surgery after surgery after surgery. And I watched them and their health and I in my early 20s, I was like, there is no way that humans have evolved to be this sickly. It has to be something we're doing wrong. And from True. there, I just started researching how to be the healthiest version of myself that I possibly can so that I can avoid. Because I don't really trust a lot of the, the systems that we have in place anyway. And uh, I have stories about that that we could go into. No, I too. And that's okay. I always say, listen to your gut, yeah. to everything you do. There is some medication that are lifesaver and there is some operation that they're a lifesaver. And, and it's all good as long as we're not extreme to any side and we have the knowledge to, to choose one over the other. You know, it's funny because back in the days, uh, holistic medicine was like or um complete medicine they used to to call it which in reality holistic medicine and um natural health medicine is a complete to the regular medicine and if we're gonna be smart enough to know that 
only both of them can work together and you can get 100%, so many people will be alive and healthy because there is places that the regular medicine cannot do a lot and there is places that the natural health medicine cannot do a lot. And, you know, and I can argue about it, but you know what? If appendix attack you, you need a doctor that will operate you. No natural medicine, no magic will, will work. So if we're smart enough to understand when to put our no and yes and combine those two together, we can get a great treatment. Absolutely. You got to use discernment. We have all of these tools available and cutting out half of them is just setting us up for failure. Yeah. It's just to be smart about it. And I'm so thankful I have people in my life like yourself that helping me to put that word out because it's important to me as much as it's going to be important to your audience, as much as it's important to bring those that information out there. Mm -hmm. I know it's I broke every glass wall there is in this planet when it comes down to shit, but... If I'm going to tell you that 20 years ago, no one wanted to talk about breast cancer and cancer in general, people were afraid. People were ashamed they had cancer. Mm -hmm. And you're going to look at me and tell me, Karine, are you out of your mind? You better talk about cancer. It's so important to talk about cancer, right? Because, but it wasn't like that mm -hmm. till someone... I don't know, in the, the TV came out and said, oh, I have cancer. I have a breast cancer. Wow, what information. Of course, we, sh we should share and talk about it because talking about it will help others. And there is a lot of people that deal with the same shit as you. So why not to help others? And for all the audience, please do not be ashamed you have constipation. Just feel... 99% of the world is with you. They all suffer from some constipation once or ever. They all have gas. They all have fatigue. They all have diarrhea. They all have um, migraines and back pain and, and some other disease that connect. Talk about it. Ask questions. Go to your doctor. Tell them how you feel. Don't keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself brings disease. Mm -hmm. Don't hold. There is problem. Ask, there is uh, in my site, in my website, in my Instagram, there is so much information. I talk about it over and over again about fertility, about problems that you never thought are related to our colon. And they are, and they are fixable. Imagine you go years with a small problem that you can solve it long time ago. How frustrating it is. Yeah, we need to be able to... So, yeah. We need to know all of our options to be able to choose the best option for us. And we can't possibly know everything there is to know about a specific subject without communicating with one for another. Sure. Yeah, for sure. So thank you. That's so why I'm so thankful. <laughs> so glad you shared it with us today. Is there thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Anything else you want to add before we go or? Tell people how to find No, us. if your audience are kind enough, they can find us at purecenter.com. You have all my links and I can have my PR guide to send you everything you need. There is links to all my bio. Follow us on Instagram, on Facebook. There is a lot of conversation like this one about specific subject. Um, you can order your supplements as well uh, online. Uh, the book, it's amazing, funny book. Shit is in the dirty world. You can find it in Amazon uh, and Walmart and Barnes & Noble. It's very funny, light, and explain what is colonics, why not to be afraid in very simple that you can be related to. And that's pretty much a good wrap up. Uh, I wish well and happiness to everybody and stay happy. Very enthusiastic episode with Kareen Namani. Very great resource if you're experiencing those th types of things, but also if you're not experiencing those types of things, because 
wow, what's some information that we all, it connects to all of us, right? Every single one of us experience something in this category every single day. Don't be fooled by falling into the trap of it not applying to you because one day it might. Our bodies are always changing. We're up and down all the time in all of our mechanisms. So just because it's not an issue today doesn't mean it might not be an issue later. Also, when you have people that you love experiencing these things, you can point them in some sort of direction and maybe help. Knowledge is our most valuable resource across the board and connecting with that knowledge, bringing that knowledge and connecting it with other individuals is how we grow as a, as a whole as a society. If you gained anything from this episode, please give us a five-star rating and a review. Any kind of interaction helps hugely, hugely. And until next week, thank you so much for being here. I love you. Namaste.